Well, hey there, Milestone. Welcome to our online worship experience today. We're excited that you've decided to join us today. My name is John. I'm our small groups pastor here. Listen, this is meant to be an interactive experience for you. So make sure as you're watching the video today, make sure you like, you comment, you share, um, and, and we'll be sure to interact with you online as well. Listen, if you're visiting with us today, we're, we're, we are very excited that you've decided to join us today. We hope that you'll go over to our website, milestonechurch.cc slash next step. And, and there you'll find a connect card to fill out and let us get to know you a little bit. Also, it's a great place for you to ask questions and to be able to, to find out some more information about Milestone. And, and we'll be glad to get to know you a little bit better and you can get to know us a little bit better. Um, and, and so we're looking forward to that. And we're just excited that you've decided to join us today. Also, if you have a prayer request, make sure you do the same. Milestonechurch.cc slash next steps so we can pray with you and encourage you and support you uh, in your need. Well, listen, over these past Past few months, we so appreciated those who have been giving to support the ministry here at Milestone. It has been a great blessing. We've been able to continue to do great ministry, and we'd like to you for you to continue to do that. You can go over to our website again, milestonechurch.cc/give, and on there you can do one-time giving. You can set up recurring giving. If you'd like to give by text. You can text 84321. They'll send you back some instructions. You can fill that out, and, and, and that way you can set up a, a giving through text. Also, if you'd like to mail in a check, uh, we, we receive those as well. It's Milestone Church, P.O. Box 5509, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, 37831. Hey, listen, we are about to have an awesome worship experience today. And so listen, you get ready to join in as the band leads us and our message today. Listen, you have a great Sunday worshiping the Lord. Love you, Milestone. And I search the world But it couldn't feel me I met empty praise And treasures of fame Are never enough Come on, sing us now Then you came along And put me back together And every desire is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, oh there's nothing better than you I'm not afraid. 
God that is the, a defender.
Good morning, Milestone Church. So excited to be with you today. I pray that you've had a great week, and I pray that God's doing great things in your life. I'm excited to launch a new series with you today. That uh, It's called uh, What in the World is Going On? And we're going to just talk about how so, so many times in our life there's craziness and chaos all around us and we just don't know what to do about it and we find ourselves you know maybe going through loss or pain or just feeling distant from God and and we think to ourselves like just what in the world is going on and so that's what we're going to talk about um, over the next few weeks and just kind of unpack that how do we continue to walk with the Lord and and live life and do what we need to do when everything around us just feels uh, like it's falling apart and I just want to encourage you this morning um, you know we are in this post-COVID world, and it's a different world. Everything's changed, and we have to learn um, how to live life uh, in this new world that we live in. And so uh, COVID, you know, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. And uh, so I just want to challenge you, like, don't be afraid to live your life. Um, you know, we need to be wise. We need to take precautions and do our part, but but don't be afraid to live life. We all have to learn how to live and how to thrive in, in this this new normal. And so I just want to encourage you. Uh, you know, we are back at church. We're having uh, we're having it on campus. I want to encourage you to uh, come back whenever you're able. And uh, you know, we're having kids ministry. We're launching student ministry September second. So we're just excited um, to see what God's going to do. And right now, more than any time ever, uh, our kids, our students, and and us as adults, we need. Uh, the Word of God, we need the people of God because the very air we breathe today is anxiety. Uh, everywhere you go, uh, this post-COVID and everything going on with that, uh, it's just very anxious. And so we, we need to zero in on the Lord and walk with Him and let His peace uh, be our peace. And so today, that's what I wanted to talk about. Today we're going to talk about the valley. And the valley, you know, it represents... Uh, just hard times in our life, you know, we, we, and spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, there's all these different aspects of, of being in the valley. And, and the valley, you know, if I was to define it, I would say it's those times in life where it feels um, where it's almost too much for us to bear, like we're right on the edge of just like, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go, I don't know how to find strength, I don't know how to uh, find guidance and wisdom, I don't know what decision to make, and, and we, we cry out, um, and, and it's just hard. And, and a lot of times we feel alone and depressed and anxious in the valley. I can speak about the valley from my own personal experience. There's been numerous valleys uh, throughout my life, but one I want to share with you today is um, after me and my wife had our first two kids, uh, Esai and Aylan, you know, I was good. We, I said, hey, we got a boy and a girl. Let's pack up shop. We're good to go. You know, it, it's affordable. It's manageable. Uh, we got a, a, a quote-unquote full family. You know, it's all good. And, and I was happy. I was content. And Sandra was too. We got our boy and a girl. Great. All right. Everybody's happy. And, and then she got pregnant a third time. And I was just like, instead of uh, the reaction I should have, I was like, oh, no. I was like, how are we going to afford this? And I was just like, oh my gosh, I didn't, this wasn't expected, you know, and I was just, I was real negative about it, and I wasn't excited about it, I was very ungrateful for it, and I remember I had to like give myself a pep talk, and over, and over some, a few days, a few weeks, I began to kind of, okay, okay, Lord, you know, if this is what you want, then all right, we'll figure it out, you'll provide, I get it, and, and kind of pep myself back up to it, you know, begin to dream a little bit, and think about what it's going to be like to have a third, and, and I picked out his name. We were going to name him Christopher Ezekiel, and I was going to call him Zeke, and uh, just, you know, so I began to get excited, and I shared it with my church, and in front of the whole church, and, and then I shared it on Facebook, you know, it's Facebook official, and, uh, and then the unthinkable happened, and my wife miscarried, and it was very hard. Um, it was, we were heartbroken. Um, you know, the dreams and, and everything that we'd been getting excited about, it, it was gone. And, um, and honestly, I just felt a lot of shame and guilt for my attitude and uh, I, the way I was not grateful. I was not thankful for this blessing of life that God was giving us. And, uh, so it was a really hard time. I had to go back in front of the church and 
share the bad news because you don't want everybody constantly walking up going, hey, when's the baby due? Hey, when's the baby due? I'm excited for your baby. And, and that's awkward and painful. Um, and my wife would just keep crying over and over and I had to do the same thing on Facebook so people didn't message about it. And so literally, it's really it was just really agonizing time. And, and you combine that with, I'm in Kentucky and so my family is a state away and her family is in Venezuela, a whole nother country. And so there, it was a hard time. She felt very alone hurt um and, and we both were just going through it was just a valley and maybe you've been there maybe you know what i'm talking about you know there's a lot of valleys that come in life maybe your valley was divorce uh, maybe your valley was losing a job maybe your valley was uh, you know marriage problems maybe it's uh, physical sickness maybe it's losing a loved one um, it can be you know any number of things but when we hit these valleys it brings uncertainty brings fear it brings worry anxiety and just uh, not knowing which way is up and it can it brings pain and in those moments I think we find ourselves you know not knowing what to do and it's in those moments that we we have questions and a lot of times we question God's character like God where are you why are you allowing this to happen to me why aren't you, you know, why aren't you fixing it? Why did you allow this? Why are you, where are you, God? I just want to know, like, and we begin to doubt if God's for us. We begin to doubt if God is able. We begin to doubt the, God's love for us. And, uh, you know, Levi Lusco, a pastor, has a quote that I really like, and he said that hard times are a passport that gives you permission to go places you wouldn't go to any other way. And so when we think about it, the valley, even though it's painful, there are certain things that we can only learn when we're in the valley. Um, there are certain lessons that we just can't learn when we're on the mountaintop. You know, we all love, the, as we walk our, our faith journey, we all love the spiritual mountaintops, the highs. We love when everything's going gray and, and God's speaking to us and, we're, and He's using us and we're seeing people, you know, follow Him and we're seeing blessings all around and and it's exciting and it's great, but what happens when we walk off the cliff of that mountain? And what happens when everything crashes around us and we find ourselves uh, just alone and hurting in the valley? And the truth is, is there are certain things that we can only learn in the valley. And the, the valley is very important to our spiritual growth. And that, that's kind of not cool and it's kind of not fun to think about, but, but hear me out on this, okay? It, without the valley, how will our faith ever be stretched? Without the valley, how would we ever see our need for Jesus if we can just handle everything on our own? Without the valley, why would we be grateful for what we have? Or how could we experience God's faithfulness as when He carries us through the fire? Um, the valley is a place where life lessons and spiritual growth and faith is really, really built. And there are a lot of examples in real life as well. The, the eaglet will never fly unless it's pushed out of its nest. You know, I think about the, the gold will never be purified unless it spends time in the hottest part of the fire. I think about the clay. The clay must be broken down and pliable for the potter to build something beautiful out of it. And so it is with us. Some things we will never learn uh, on the mountaintop, but we have to walk through the valley. And it's in those times that God teaches us uh, a lot of things about Him and about ourselves. And so some questions that we wrestle with in the valley, and I want us to, to kind of wrestle with those before we hit the scriptures today. And so here's some questions I think that we wrestle with. Number one is, uh, you know, am I the only one going through this? Like, who goes through the valley? Like, is it just me? And I want to encourage you today, it is not just you. No one is immune from the valley, okay? We all go through seasons of life, uh, those who are followers of God and those who are not followers of God. Every person, the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. Um, listen, I want know everybody has problems. Everyone who is alive, breathing, and on this earth we are dealing with the effects of sin. It has marred all of creation. The earth itself is groaning for redemption. Uh, there is sickness. There is death. Uh, there is sin. I mean, we have all this around us and everybody's dealing with it. So it's not just you. You are not the first one to ever go through the valley that you're in right now. I promise you. And I pray that encourages you. Another question I think is, 
well, why do we go through the valley? Like, why, why do I have to go through this? And I think sometimes we go through this valley when we disobey God, like our sin. Uh, we can go through, uh, we can have consequences for our sins. We can have a distant relationship from God when we spend time uh, wallowing in sin and we neglect our time with God and we become distant. Uh, those things can can lead us to the spiritual depression, this disconnect. And sometimes it, we're in the valley because of other people's sins, other people's decisions that have harmed us. And and then yet other times uh, it's no one's fault. Sometimes it's life just being thrust upon us. Um, and But there's a fourth reason that I really want to unpack today, and that's this right here. I think it's important to know that sometimes we go through the valley. God allows us to go through the valley for His purposes. And that's what we're going to look at today. And so today we're going to be talking about um, these three people who were dear friends of Jesus. It was uh, Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. Now this family was very close to Jesus. They would eat together. They would minister together. Um, they're mentioned all through the Gospels. And one day... Um, Lazarus got really, really sick, and his sisters, they knew Jesus, and they knew who he was and what he was capable of. And So they sent for Jesus. They sent messengers, said, go get Jesus. He's got to come, and he's going to heal our brother Lazarus because he loves Lazarus and loves us, and, and I know he can do it. And so they sent for him, and, and Jesus got the message, but yet while the messengers were gone, the sisters waited. They just prayed. They were waiting as Lazarus was just going and getting sicker and sicker. They waited, and they waited, and they waited, and then Lazarus died. Now, Jesus had gotten the message, but he responded in a very odd way, in a very different way than what you would expect. And, and we see this in John 11, it says this, But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of Man will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for two days. He stayed where he was. He waited. He waited. Like, how odd? How odd is that? Jesus could have healed him, but he waited until he died. Now, you can think about the pain um, that Mary and Martha are going through. They're in the valley right now. They're asking questions like, Jesus, why, you know, why, why didn't he come? Like, is Jesus not really for us? Like, did he not really love Lazarus? Does he not really love us? Like, like he could have stopped this. Why, you know, they're hurting, they're in pain, and they're in mourning. And then Jesus shows up in verse uh, 32 of chapter 11. Mary falls out in front of falls at his feet and says, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would be alive. And she's pleading with him. And both sisters actually say the same thing in two different verses. They're like, Jesus, why weren't you here? Like, we thought you loved us. We thought you were for us. We thought you would, you would save him. Like, why? Why? In the pain, you, it just kind of excuses from the passage. You can sense it. They're hard at even Jesus' disciples were doubting his reasons. They doubted why he stayed. And he told me, he said, listen, Lazarus is dead. And he just spoke plainly, matter of fact, Lazarus is dead. And he said, but I'm glad you weren't there. That's odd. And he says, because what I'm about to do, what I'm about to show you, you're truly going to believe. And so we see that the, the purpose behind it, he allowed Lazarus to die because he was about to do something that no one could see coming that was so big and so powerful that it would build their faith. It would grow leaps and bounds and just amaze those who were witnessed it. He had something bigger and better planned than what the sisters thought. And a lot of times I think we're in the same way. We don't understand. We cry out like, God, where are you? Why can't you fix my problem? Like you could snap your fingers and I could be out of this spiritual funk. You know, you could snap your fingers and I could be physically healed. You could snap your fingers and my all my bills would be paid. You know, I would have this or, or my marriage would be healed. Like, God, why, why are you allowing me to go through this? Why don't you just fix it? And we don't understand. Now, here's the thing is that we will never fully understand the mind of God because He's God and we are not. And that's a good thing. He is greater. He is higher. His plans are, are above what we can even comprehend. And here's the important thing I want you to get today is when you're going through the valley, God is not asking you to understand. He's asking you to trust Him. And I'm going to say that again. I want you to get that. Listen, write that down. God is not asking you to understand. He's asking you 
to trust Him. That's what it's all about. Because He's been through, He's been through it all, and we can follow Him, and He will lead us out. And we also can know that when we hit a valley, we can know that He's doing a work, that He's building our faith, and that, that He's growing us, even if we don't understand it. We can be confident He's growing it. And like this old country pastor used to say, I love it, you want to write this down? He'd say, you can be confident that if God leads you to it, He'll lead you through it. Now, I love that. That's an Appalachian pastor saying right there, okay? Now, you need to write that down and say, if God leads you to it, he'll lead you through it, okay? And we can, and we can trust him in that. And so, so here's, a, I want to show you now a, a passage today. If here's what God is saying today to you. If you're in the valley today, I want you to catch this, okay? If you find yourself and you feel like you're trudging through the mud and the sorrow of life, whether you've lost someone dear to you or you're experiencing hardships uh, financially, physically, whatever it is, listen, I want you to know today, God is speaking to you and He has a message for you. And here's a passage that I just want to show you, I want to speak to you, and I want you to receive it. I want you to, to meditate on it, think about it, read it to yourself whenever you're in the valley, and remember uh, God's message, God's faithfulness to you. And it is one of the most beautiful passages of Scripture ever. It is Psalm 23. And we're just going to read the first six verses. But I want you to think about this when you're in the middle of the valley. Verse 1 says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now think about that. that the Lord is a personal shepherd. It says He's my shepherd. He's your shepherd. He is our. It's personal. And He is saying that the good shepherd is calling you to trust Him today, that He is with you and He will guide you you through the valley. Draw near to him. Now I love verse 2. It says, so verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Even in the valley, think about the beautiful, peaceful imagery of green pastures and still waters that are quiet. And he's saying, I can calm you. I can calm your heart. I can calm your fears. I can restore your soul even in the middle of your valley. That's what God is speaking to you today. Draw near to Him. He can calm your soul. Then verse 3 goes on. It says, He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. If you don't know what path to take, you feel lost, you don't know what direction, seek Him. He will show you. He will point the right way to go. He will help you know what direction to take. He is our guide. He is our shepherd and He will lead us. Verse 4 says, Yea, though, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. So even when death shows up at your door, even when death is creeping in the back window of your house, even when you find yourself looking upon the long shadow, of the, the dark valley of the shadow of death, and you're looking at it and it scares you, He is there with you. His footprints have already walked through it. Jesus has already conquered it. And He will guide you. The Good Shepherd will hold you near. His rod and His staff will protect you. He will comfort you. Seek Him today, and He will get you through your valley. Then it goes on and says, verse 5, You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. If you seek Him, He will bless you. He will pour His presence out upon you, and your cup will run over. We can have as much Jesus as we want today. He's there. He's waiting. Then lastly, verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love the desire there just to be with God, to dwell in His house forever. Listen, He's available. He's there. He's, he's ready to heal, to guide, to strengthen, to help guide you through the valley. Notice it didn't say He'll make sure you never deal with the valley. He says He will lead you through the valley. And I want you to be confident today to know that He will not waste this journey, that He loves you, He cares for you, and that He's building you. He, he's building a greater faith in you. You are growing today. If you're going through the valley, He is using it. He is refining you. He, he is building you. He's building something deeper and stronger to handle life even, even better. And I love this quote from Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Lee Roosevelt says, When you feel like you're at the end of your rope, tie a knot, tie a knot and hang on. I think that's, that's real beautiful. And just don't give up. Cling to God. Cling to Him. Hold to Him. Don't grow weary. Remember, it's, He doesn't expect you. He's not calling you to figure it out, to understand it. He just wants you to trust Him. He just wants you to trust Him. 
And then going back to, to the main text, say, you know, think about Lazarus. At the very end of the story, Jesus says, I'm here to show you something you can never imagine. So he tells Mary, he says, move the stone away. He's like, y'all roll the stone away. And Mary's like, no, no, no. My brother, Lazarus, has been dead in there for four days. It's going to smell horrible. And Jesus looks at her and he says a phrase that I think is so beautiful. I'm going to read it to make sure I get it right. And he says, Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? He said, listen, if you will believe, if you will trust me, you will see me move. You will see God's power. You will see things you never imagined. And when they did and they rolled the sun away, Jesus raised his voice and said, Lazarus, come out. And this man who'd been dead for four days got up, walked out, and they took off the, the grave clothes. He was wrapped up and, and he was restored to life. A miracle. They had, they had never seen it coming. I imagine the disciples' jaws were just like, ah. And he's like, this is what it was about. I had something bigger than you thought. I was doing a greater work than you could ever imagine. And he said, if you only will believe me, if you will only trust me, then you will see things like this and you will grow in me. And I think he says that today to whatever you're dealing with in your valley, if you will trust him, if you will believe in him, if you will hang on to him, then you will see God's power. You will see God's glory. He will move. He will provide. He will heal. He will do so many things in your life, even in the middle of the valley. He's not only the God of the mountain, He's the God of the valley. And so I pray this encourages you today. I pray that you hold on and don't give up no matter what you're going through. And, and so right now, listen, think about that. I pray that if you don't know God, that you would call out to Him today and you would ask Him, say, Jesus, I need you in my life. Come in my heart and save me. Turn from your sin and turn to Him because He is a God who saves and if you already know Jesus, but you're just you're in a dark valley, cling to Him. Listen, call out to Him. Raise your arms to Him as a little child and watch your heavenly Father pick you up and comfort you. Let's worship and let's be thankful for this God who's faithful even when we're in the valley. God bless you today. Hey, church family. Man, what an incredible service we had today. Just so blessed to be in the presence of God, uh, no matter where you're at. Thank you so much for watching, whether you're at the lake, you're in your house, uh, wherever that may be. Just thank you so much for tuning in uh, with us here today. Uh, remember, if you're a, this is your first time watching us, please head on over to our website, milestonechurch.cc slash next steps. There you'll find our connect card. Fill that out. Uh, we would be so uh, appreciative if you would do that for us. Awesome. So remember, uh, there are multiple ways you can give. You can text 84321. It'll send you a link. You can get that set up real easy and give by text. Or you can also head on over to our website at milestonechurch.cc slash give and give that way and set up reoccurring giving. Man, what an incredible time in the presence of the Lord today. Thank you so much for tuning into our online experience. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day.